You feel stuck in an endless loop of Groundhog Days. Are you desperately craving a new outlet to express yourself in? Do you feel compelled to create something instead of just consuming the next piece of media shoved in your face by the algorithm? I was feeling that too, and truthfully for me, it got really dark. When PewDiePie released his new video showcasing his art journey for the last hundred days or so, I was absolutely dumbstruck. I had believed that art was one of these things that you were kind of just born with innate talent for, or you didn't have and shouldn't bother trying to learn how to do. It really made me also want to try to learn something new. It kind of scratched that itch or seemed like it could scratch that itch to go acquire a new skill. It also unlocked a new memory for me. When I was in high school, I had taken a digital illustration class that to this day is the most engaged I had ever been in a normal high school or even general, just like all of education class that I had ever taken. And for the first time, I didn't have to push myself to do any of this. I didn't feel lazy or feel like I was supposed to be doing more. I just felt like I could sit down and do it. And maybe more than anything else, it just felt rewarding for the act in and of itself. I dusted off the iPad Pro I had bought almost two years ago, whoops, and set out on my way. I decided to see how far I could take it in 30 days, just like PewDiePie did. And over that time, I was reminded of three things that I think I probably already knew, but I had forgotten somewhere along the way of becoming an adult and getting a job. As we go through the art that I created over the last 30 days and what it looked like at the beginning to the end, I'll take some time and share those three lessons with you as well. Anyway, let's look at some art. Before I decided to pick up drawing, I had been missing something in my life that I don't think I really would have been able to put words to without taking the time to rediscover it. And that's the art of, or accident maybe, of falling down the rabbit hole. Falling down the rabbit hole is getting lost in something for hours and hours at a time. It's putting your head down to focus on the thing while the sun is still out and looking up while the sun is now down, wondering where the time had gone, but yet feeling like you used it on something really valuable. You emerge from that hole having created something new, something that didn't exist before. And more importantly than that, you emerge having forgotten about yourself and your problems for a little while and just attended to the thing right in front of you. If you've lost this too, except for maybe the last time that you fell down the rabbit hole to waste three hours going down r slash politics, and coming back out of it feeling like you, well, if you've ever done that, you know it doesn't feel good. I'd like to remind you that this kind of falling down the rabbit hole, this act of losing yourself in the process of making a thing that you care about feels really good. And if you haven't felt it in a while, it's worth trying to find it again. And you might have to try something that is unconventional or new for you to get it back but I promise you it's worth it. Beyond just the act of drawing itself being a luxurious escape from this little mind palace of mine, it also provides you endless different paths to go down. The hole never stops. You can fall down as far as you want to go. You fall deeper and deeper and you may never actually reach the bottom and that's actually a profoundly beautiful thing. If you get tired of coloring and shading, then maybe you wanna go focus on your line work for a while. And if you get tired of drawing characters and portraits, maybe you wanna focus on drawing sceneries for a while. And if you get tired of all of that, maybe you just become Jackson Pollock and throw paint at a canvas and see what happens. And you can pull inspiration from anywhere in your life. You could look at your favorite cartoon or your favorite picture that you took or that you've seen, and you could try to recreate that. You could try to imagine something fantastical in the landscape of your own mind and see if you can bring some amount of that into reality yourself. The options are boundless. The potential for expansion and acquisition of new skill limitless, and you're never done, no matter how far you go. Drawing is the first thing that I've found in a really long time that has allowed me to fall back in love with the process separate from the outcome. I'm not worried about whether or not other people are going to like the art that I make, although I will say it's really, really cool when my girlfriend likes my art because she is a fantastic editor, and getting a, a gold star from her, that's, that's nice. nice but I'm really just focused on making the best art that I know how to make right now. And I know that's not the art that I'm gonna be able to make someday, and that I'm not there yet, and that's okay. I don't wanna skip this part. I don't wanna to skip to the end. And it's also worth remembering that I'll never be there, wherever there is. Being alive and being an artist of any kind is the 
art and act of perpetually becoming. It's recognizing that you'll never arrive. This is kind of like the mountain idea I talked about in my last video, wherever that is, and it's worth mentioning again now. In my career as a software engineer, I regularly joke that I actually get paid for my skills in Google Foo and my ability to consult ChatGPT to find an answer. There are almost no technical problems at this point that haven't been solved, and the allure and ability to just copy and paste an answer from the internet into your code base and get it pretty close to working with next to no thought is well, that allure is tempting, it's overwhelming, it actually makes no sense to do it any other way. This, though, creates a really interesting and truthfully disheartening experience, and I think it's one that you're going to be able to relate to, too. I found that I don't think for myself anymore. I don't sit down and try to think about what my way to get to the solution is. I just look for the fastest way to get to the solution. I just want to be done. I don't think about how I get there anymore. I stopped pushing myself to come up with my own ideas and to express myself and settled for just being a carbon copy of all of the content I consumed and all of the different answers I looked for outside of myself. In art, though, I found a new opportunity to push myself, to be myself again, and to trust myself to create my own answers, my own outputs, my own outcomes. I've started to relearn how to trust in my own present ability and also in my ability to acquire more ability. Early on, almost all of my drawings were attempts at a one-to-one -one carbon copy of the reference I was looking at or of the thing that I was tracing. That earlier impulse allure of just copy-pasting to get to the right answer I had mentioned in my career as an engineer was still omnipresent. Then one day, I realized that if I wanted to get any better at this, like really, truly better at this, I was gonna have to learn to think for myself again. I was gonna have to learn how to trust myself again. If I could take this admittedly small understanding of color and shapes and forms that I was starting to cultivate and start to make my own guesses, try something, look at the reference, erase it, try it again, erase it, try it again until I got something that felt good to me, I was gonna become a progressively better and better artist, and I was also going to become progressively better at being myself. I stopped tracing for 100% accuracy, and I started to use it just as a jumping off point. And then I would fall down the hole. Much like that ability to just fall down the rabbit hole and that time slip me by, this willingness to just guess and check and fail and get it wrong and try again and try again and try again until I got something I liked was something I hadn't felt. I, 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 honestly, I, I don't remember. I, I don't remember the last time I felt that. I think we all do that. I think it's a lot easier to do that, but it's a lot less rewarding. The most rewarding things come as a result of trusting ourselves and trusting our ability or pushing ourselves to acquire just that next handhold up of ability from where we are right now. I found that again in drawing. In an age where you can ask ChatGPT to generate a resume that allows you to apply to 500 jobs in a millisecond, or ask Dolly to produce the most mind-bendingly realistic, beautiful image that you could think of, it's going to be more important than ever to choose not to do that and to sit down and choose to create for you to choose to learn a thing, to choose to push yourself to be different than you are right now. These tools allow you to get to the answer more quickly, but they don't teach you anything about the process it takes to get to the answer. They don't teach you anything about how to be yourself or how to be okay with perpetually becoming. Bolstering your efficiency and productivity might be great if you're quiet quitting your corporate America job, but I don't think that that's always the answer for fulfillment and contentedness and, and happiness. And in today and tomorrow's world, I think there's going to be fewer, more valuable currencies than those things and in this ability to just try and to just trust yourself. I'm someone who likes to play it fairly safe. While I certainly have a history of making fairly impulsive decisions, I've quit jobs to travel or because I was bored and I've started 18 different hobbies and quit almost all of them and I've started new jobs, I've moved cities. All of these things sometimes on a whim. I do jujitsu or what I lovingly refer to as murder cuddling or involuntary yoga, which is like not the most calm, relaxing, safe thing. And I'm willing to try just about any food item on the menu. Some people might view all of those behaviors as 
inherently risky as inherently freedom seeking. But when it comes to my overall life trajectory, I've tried to just play it by the book. I've tried to get the job and get the status and get the body and get the, the things, the trappings of success that we're all supposed to have. And the more I did that, the less I felt free, the less I felt like myself, just like I could no longer allow myself to fall down a hole and see where it led or trust myself to come up with my own answers. I didn't feel free to make my own choices anymore either. I just pushed myself to be more and more normal, whatever that even means, and to be more and more successful by the societal definition of it. And in that process, I felt worse and worse and worse. I lost my belief in freedom. I became a slave to should do's and supposed to's and could have been's. And really, I, I, I just felt so tightly coupled to this idea of a life, an ideal life that even if I got it, wouldn't be ideal for me. So art, more specifically creating the art that we want to create for no reason other than the fact that we want to create it, is a reminder that we still always have the freedom to choose. We always have an opportunity to color outside the lines or paint a picture with no lines at all. There is no right answer or one singular answer. Sure, it, there's using art as the vehicle for this long metaphor, there's lighting and color theory and line work and ability to shade or layer or the, you know there's so many different technical aspects in all of this but those are just the rules of the game and you don't have to play by the rules you don't even have to know the rules i recently heard one of my favorite authors of all time and youtube like OG to end all OGs, John Green say, you don't need to understand novels or story structures to be a novelist. You just have to write. Art is the same. You don't go become an artist after you go to art school or because you understand all of the different techniques I just talked about. You're an artist as soon as you sit down and try to make a piece of art. You can seek to understand the hows and the ins and the outs and the whys of all of it, or you can eschew all of that in favor of just pursuing a thing because you want to make it and because it seems fun and pleasant and enjoyable and you're free to do that and you're free to do it however you want to do it. You can, like we've talked about already, just copy and paste the ideas in front of you or you can try to create your own. And neither of these paths are right or wrong. It's not, again, there's no right answer. There's just a choice to be made. There's freedom in that choice. and. In my experience, there's a lot more freedom in one of those choices than in the other one. You're always free to choose. That's true in art, but art is just a facet of life and you are always free to choose in your life as well. I don't really know where I want art to take me yet or if I want it to take me anywhere. I also don't really care. No, of course, I live in America and I get sold the dream of being a creator all day long and twice on Sunday. So I started daydreaming about getting to the point where my art is good enough to sell it on an online shop or gain more of a following or any of these kinds of things. And that's, that's gonna be there. That's just par for the course nowadays. And you know, maybe someday that will happen. I would like it to. I think that'd be really, really cool. I get excited thinking about that. But whether that does or doesn't happen, I've fallen down a rabbit hole I don't see myself ever wanting to climb back out of. I love this. It's so fun. Not only is it fun, I've started to trust myself again and I feel progressively more free to be who I am and to make what I want to make, whether it's drawing on my iPad or playing a guitar or just spending time with my friends and making more fun and more light out of that. I've been reminded that we are always free to express ourselves however and whenever we choose. We're not shackled to any idea that we've been sold or that we've chosen to believe. And there is always freedom available to us in any of the things that we do or make. I found some really helpful tools along the way and I've met some really helpful people like the, the digital art community online is friggin' awesome. Like they are the coolest and they are so welcoming and so generous with their time and their advice. They just want to see each other win and that's that's awesome and so i'm really grateful to be part of that in whatever tiny way i am at this point point. and who knows maybe because you've seen this video or some of the other art videos out there you'll come and join us too if you're contemplating starting your art journey or any new journey what's holding you back 
or if you've already started, what have you, what have you learned? What are you seeing? Do you feel caught up or limited by some of the same things that I was? And if you're already, you know, down the road a bit and you were looking at my drawings and you think there's ways to improve them, any of the above. I would love it if you could leave me a comment. Speaking of community, speaking of the digital art community, I want this channel to be a community where I get to know all of you the way that you get to know me by watching my story. So please let me know what you think. If you liked this video, if you liked the art, if you just want to keep spending more time with me or getting these overly philosophical ideas about drawing on an iPad, it would mean so much to me if you could hit that subscribe button. And with that, until next time, folks.